All right. So uh, the agenda for today would be uh, security zones and security policy between zones. Uh, and tomorrow, I'll, I'll try to see if I can start dynamic NAT with port numbers today. Uh, if not, we can see these topics uh, in, in for the next class, okay? Uh, before we start, I have received certain queries as to, uh, you know, when people tried to start the lab, they were facing issues wherein they were not able to log into the firewall. Uh, they were not able to log into the firewalls, right? And... Uh, uh, so what happens, guys? Please try to understand how this boot process happens, okay? Uh, what happens is when you turn on the firewall, right? Uh, it will boot uh, like any other operating system like CentOS or, or Linux or any other system. It takes some time to come up. Once it comes up, you will be able to see a prompt saying VM login, okay? The moment you get the prompt does not mean that the firewall is ready yet, okay? The firewall has booted up, but it will take some time to be ready. What do we mean by ready? Uh, these are higher concepts. I'll just give you, uh, you know, the information on a very surface level uh, so that you just understand what's happening, okay? So whenever this firewall boots up, uh, the booting process is completed, you'll see a VM login prompt in front of you. There is a process that runs at the background that is called as auto commit. It takes some time for that auto commit to complete. What that auto commit is doing, it's pushing the configuration which is there in the memory to the data plane. Okay. We already discussed what a data plane is, which uh, data plane is the uh, traffic handling part of the firewall, you know, the interfaces, and uh, there will be a CPU that takes care of this traffic alone. Okay. So uh, the configuration which is there on the firewall based on this auto commit will be pushed to the data plane. Now this process will take some time. So you will see VM login prompt, you will see PAHDF login prompt, and then you will see PAVM login prompt. So there will be these three prompts that, you know, that will update automatically. It might take like a couple of minutes maybe, right? Or it might take three to four minutes. So uh, you know, sometimes it takes longer. All you need to do is be patient with it, right? Reason being, uh, you'll not be able to log in immediately. Once you see PAVM login, allow one or two more minutes and then try to attempt with your default password, okay? Now, default credentials are admin admin for Palo Alto. Uh, it's already mentioned on the lab that we have written, right? Uh, the, the lab already has this information. Uh, once again, I'm iterating it. The default credential for the firewalls are admin admin and the login for Windows machine is welcome. Okay. Uh, once you try to log in to the Palo Alto firewall, it will ask you to change the password. Now, it will not just take any password. Okay. We need to understand it's a firewall security device. It would, uh, you know, uh, there, there are certain constraints. For example, it should be minimum eight characters. It should have one capital letter at least, and, uh, you know, one small caps letter, and then it should have a symbol. It should have numericals. That's the reason I suggested to keep the password as test at rate one, two, three, wherein T could be capital, okay? Now, these were the things that you could have tried for the day one, okay? For the uh, today, uh, whatever things we are going to do, uh, we are going to see it from the day two or lab two, okay? Wherein whatever configuration was done on day one will be imported to uh, the day two configuration so that you do not need to start from the scratch. You don't have to go uh, log in, change the password, then, you know, uh, assign the IP address to the interface, create untrusted zone, and then do a commit and then verify, right? Add a default route. So all these changes, we are going to import uh, to the uh, firewall directly so, so that you don't have to do all that. And this will save your time, okay? So before we jump into the lab part, right? Obviously, we need to understand the theory behind things, how things work. And once we understand, we'll be able to jump to the lab. So let's start with... Uh,
So we'll we'll start with the security zones. Clear this out. This is not needed. Let me really need. Security zones. Okay. Now Palo Alto firewall is a zone based firewall. Okay. So PA firewall is a zone based firewall. Okay. Now, when we say zone based firewall, what do we exactly mean by that? Okay. We need to understand what a zone is in order for uh, proceeding uh, to configure the firewall itself right so uh, what exactly is a zone so when you do a google what what is a zone in a firewall you'll see different definitions for that right i'll try to give you the simplest of that a zone it is a logical segmentation okay for those who understand networking, right, or those who might have done their CCNAs, they might be aware of the concept called as VLAN, right? I am not implying that VLAN and zone are exactly the same. They too have their differences. I'm just trying to give you the analogy uh, that they have similarities, right? So we use VLAN to segment the broadcast domain right so vlans are being used to segment the broadcast domain and then you know uh, each vlan will have its own broadcast domain and and they cannot talk to each other straightforward right they will need a router for inter vlan routing and that kind of stuff right the point over here is the segmentation wherein how we divide a uh, a single broadcast domain by using the VLANs, right? Similarly, zone is used for segmentation in a network topology. Okay. What do I mean by that? Let's have a look. We'll refer to our lab diagram. So this is my PA and GFW. This side is my WAN. This is my ISP router. This is OOB management firewall, uh, sorry, management endpoint or Windows machine, right? And this side, we have a switch and then these machines connected to the switch, right? So uh, these these simulate the LAN environment. Again, I have already given you the idea on the day one itself that we are not going to go ahead and uh, design the uh, spine and leaf kind of environment. We are going to keep it simple because we are learning Palo Alto, not the networking part. However, the traffic uh, will be similar, right? So we will be able to see the traffic coming down to the firewall and we'll be able to segregate the traffic or we'll be able to understand, okay, this is my LAN traffic, okay? So now you might be able to see that this is my LAN, this is my van, this is my out of band management. And then uh, okay. 
okay and then we had something called as uh, uh, there was a windows server windows server and this was in the dmz zone right which was the demilitarized zone now i told you that land we are gonna name it as trust zone van as untrust zone and dmz is gonna be named as dmz okay this management is connected on a management interface it is not a part of the data plane interface or data plane uh, this is completely a part of management so we don't need to assign zones to the management okay data plane traffic comes on data plane interfaces okay and this traffic can be segregated based on zones management plane traffic would be handled by the management interface so there will be a management interface that takes care of your management traffic right so this is different from your data plane we never assign the zones to the data plane okay uh, sorry we never assign the zones to the management plane the zones will be assigned to the uh, data plane interfaces okay now let's understand these zones a bit then we'll go ahead and see on the gui how uh, we can go ahead and create them right so this zone when i say trust zone this trust zone is simulating the behavior of or or it's it's uh, it belongs to my lan okay where all my endpoints or or my host machines reside and my traffic so for example there is bob and then there is steve these guys are working on their projects on their host machines right so this traffic because these are my employees i trust this traffic right and that's the reason we name this as trust zone okay so when we name this as trust zone we are not gonna uh you know physically install anything over here this is just a logical construct okay let's segment this logically stating this is my trust zone okay we are not gonna do any physical changes in the environment this is just a logical construct where we say that this belongs to the trust zone so what will happen this interface over here this i believe was ethernet 3 slash 3 uh, sorry 1 slash 3 this is my ethernet 1 slash 3 interface of the Palo Alto firewall this interface will then be assigned to a zone that will be the trust zone okay or trusted zone whatever you'd like to name these are name these name in itself does not uh you know do anything right for example i can name it trust zone i can name it land zone i can name it whatever i want it just again uh, reiterating myself it's a logical construct i can give whatever name that i want to it's free uh i mean it's uh not dependent uh on anything but it would make sense to give it a name you know uh uh, that would correspond to your topology for example we named it trust zone because this belongs to the uh the traffic belongs to the uh trusted environment okay belongs to the environment uh our corporate environment okay so lan we named it trust zone and this interface which had which received which was responsible for uh sending and receiving the traffic from this lan environment ethernet one slash three we will go ahead and assign this interface to the trust zone okay similarly this interface was ethernet one slash one so this is van that is your wide area network van is untrusted okay van is untrusted why it is untrusted because this is a public uh you know this is where the public traffic goes right uh your traffic is going to the routers which are not owned by you and then uh, there might be a bad actor who might be, you know, attempting to gain access to your traffic or trying to break your encryption while the traffic is traversing through the internet, right? So things like that. That's the reason we call it as an untrusted, uh, you know, uh, domain because it's a public domain, right? So we can name this as untrust zone. You are free 
to name it van zone if you feel like no i would like to name it van zone no worries if that makes more sense to you you can right but in corporate uh the common practice is to name it as interest zone all right so we will then uh add this interface that is ethernet one slash one to your interest zone okay now there should be a question. Now we have assigned Ethernet 1 slash 3 to trust zone. We have assigned Ethernet 1 slash 1 to untrust zone. Does that mean one interface, one zone? No. One interface, an interface can be a part of one zone only. For example, Ethernet 1 slash 3 can only be a part of trust zone. Okay. But trust zone in itself can have multiple interfaces like Ethernet 1 slash 3, Ethernet 1 slash 8, Ethernet 1 slash 7, and so on. Okay. So you can you can you can group all these interfaces or whatever interfaces you would like. For example, uh, you have a huge LAN environment. You want to use two interfaces instead of using just one interface, right? So let's say this is building A. Okay. This is your building. A. Now there is another building that might be over here. Okay. This might be your building B. And there might be some host machines over here. They might be less or more in number. And then this traffic, you want it to be coming to a different interface, right? Uh, let's say Ethernet 1 slash 7. Okay. Now, what you can do, because both of this traffic is trusted, what we can do, we can add Ethernet 1 slash 3 and 1 slash 7 to the trust zone. Okay. So we can have multiple interfaces in a zone, but one interface can only be assigned to one zone. Okay. Ethernet 1 slash 3 cannot be a part of trust as well as untrust. It can be only in trust zone. All right. So this was about uh, zones. Uh, Again, uh, Palo Alto is a zone-based firewall. There, there are firewalls in the market. Like if you talk about Checkpoint, Checkpoint supports uh, zones. I mean, you can configure the firewall without even config configuring zones as well. Uh, so it, it depends, right? Uh, but Palo Alto is a, a zone-based firewall. Uh, you can define a zone and then write the security policies based on that. Okay. Cool. Uh, the, so these are the two zones and then the third zone is the DMZ zone. Again, for today's lab, we are not going to use any Windows server as of now. So we are not going to look into the creation of DMZ zone. Okay. We'll look into DMZ zones uh, and then we'll create as and when we are going to do the labs for this. Okay. Uh, moving forward. So this was about zone. Moving forward. Uh, next thing is your security policy i believe one second yeah security policy between zones right now so what are zones we have created we have created trust zone this will have my lan we have created untrust zone for the van okay so these are the two zones that we are creating as of now what all interfaces are there in trust zone ethernet 1 slash 3 is in trust zone ethernet 1 slash 1 is in untrust zone okay here we have connected the isp router all right good uh now, in so defining a zone itself is not going to enforce any security. Okay, we need to write security policies that will enforce security. Okay, so what is a security policy? A security policy is similar to ACL, but it has more information that would uh, define if a traffic is to be allowed or denied, 
okay so security policy is nothing wherein we define certain parameters right like zones then source address then destination address then service or the port numbers then application okay there are a few other parameters i don't want to uh, go into that that will be a bit complicated you know we have something called as uh, uh, fqdns and all that but but as of now when i say zones again these zones are like source zone and destination zone okay so a security policy based on these parameters we are gonna define if a traffic will be allowed or denied okay so we we, we need to define uh, this policy and then we need to define the action what action will be taken if there is a traffic that matches this particular security policy right so for simplicity we'll just see two actions one is allow and the second one is deny okay allow is gonna allow the traffic to go through deny is simply gonna deny that traffic there itself okay so let's go back to our, our topology diagram okay and let's say bob is trying to reach out to a server on the internet okay let's say this uh, bob is doing some job on this machine he's it's working on this particular machine and then it's trying to reach out to maybe let's say google.com for the sake of simplicity okay so and and we need to write a security policy so that this traffic is allowed okay now uh, we need to understand uh, if there is no security policy the traffic is going to be de denied by default i have i have shown this in my uh, last session wherein there are two default policies already present in the firewall first one is intra zone allow second one is inter zone deny okay what do we mean by intra zone allow intra zone means the traffic that is coming from the same zone and heading towards the same zone will be allowed by default inter zone means the traffic that might be coming from one zone and going towards another zone will be denied by default okay so these two are default policies these will be there you cannot do anything you cannot delete these policies however you can create policies on top of this policy if you'd like to change the behavior okay we'll see how how that works so for this example if we, if we talk about intra zone allow for example let's just talk about intra zone allow then we'll talk about this flow that we were discussing if bob wants to reach to google.com okay so first uh first let's say uh let's let's discuss this intra zone okay so let's say bob is trying to ping steve okay let me draw this diagram again so that we have a clear picture this is my pa firewall and this is my switch and this is this is bob and this is steve okay now let's say and and we have defined uh, this this interface is ethernet one slash three and the zone is trust okay now if bob is trying let's say let's assign the ip address as well okay for the sake of simplicity 
we have used 192 over here, 192, 168 on the management interface. So I'm not going to touch that subnet. We have assigned 10.1.1.0 subnet over here. Let's go ahead with 172 subnet over here. Okay. So let's say the IP address over here is 172.16.1.2. Uh, and the IP address over here is 172.16.1.3. Okay. Now that means that this be slash 24 slash 24. This means that these two machines belongs to the uh, same subnet, right? Uh, and, and, and are in the same network. Okay. Now when Bob tries to ping and we will have to, uh, one more piece of information, the default gateway for Bob and Steve is going to be this, IP, this interface. And we are going to define that IP address as 172.16 dot one dot one slash 24 okay so the ip address on ethernet one slash three on the Palo Alto firewall is going to be 172.16 one dot one slash 24 bob's ip is one dot two and c's ip is one dot three now if in case uh you know uh this traffic can come uh if it all it has to go anywhere outside the network it will reach out to the default gateway one slash three if it if it all it has to uh uh, talk to the same network, it can just do an ARP and then send the packet and then the switch is going to send the packet over here, right? Uh, if there is, a, a, let's say there is another, okay, let, we'll, we'll talk about this later, right? No worries. Fine. So let's say uh, Bob is trying to reach uh, to the Steve uh, and, and there is a packet that is being generated from Bob and Bob is going to send the packet to the Palo Alto firewall. The Palo Alto firewall, now this interface is trust. Okay, this zone is trust. And the traffic is then going to be headed back towards the Steve, right? So what will happen? The traffic originated from Bob, headed to the Palo Alto firewall. And then from this Palo Alto firewall, the traffic went back to Steve. That means the traffic came on trust zone and then left on trust zone and that created the flow in the intra zone, right? So the intra zone allowed took a hit. So this security rule based on the uh, default behavior of allow, this traffic will be allowed, okay? Now let's talk about Bob wanted to visit Google. google.com right and this is my isp router so bob uh, opens the browser on its machine it types google.com the first thing that will happen is dns resolution uh let's say the dns server is internal i'm not going to go into that uh, dns resolution as of now let's say the server was internal the ip address was resolved okay and now bob has the ip address of google.com for the sake of discussion, we'll name it 88888, okay? Now, because this 8888 is on the internet, the Bo uh, this machine, Bob is gonna forward the traffic to the Palo Alto firewall on ethernet one slash three, right? So the traffic is received on ethernet one slash three over here. So this packet will look like this. The source IP will be 1.2. The destination IP is going to be 8.8.8.8, .8 okay? Uh, then there will be certain ports. I'm not going to uh, discuss ports as of now. We'll, we'll see that in the traffic logs, okay? So uh, this packet came to the Palo Alto firewall. The Palo Alto firewall, as of now, does not have any policy defined. These are the two default rules that, which are present over there, okay? So interzone deny, what it will do, it will do a route lookup. Okay. Firewall will do a route lookup. Exactly similar to a router because when a traffic arri uh, arrives to a router, the router is going to have a look into the uh, routing table and see on which interface do we need to forward this particular traffic. Similarly, we are going to do a route lookup on the Palo Alto firewall to understand where this traffic is headed. Okay. Based on this, we came to understand, okay, this traffic should be headed to Ethernet 1 slash 1. And the zone is untrust. 
Okay. So firewall will say, okay, source zone is trust. Destination zone is untrust. Okay. Then once this route lookup is done, it's going to do a policy lookup. After route lookup, there will be something called as policy lookup. To be precise, it will be a security policy lookup. Okay. This security policy lookup will see if there is a security policy that will allow this traffic. Okay. Coming back to the same point, we have not explicitly defined any policies as of now. These are the two rules which already exist. It checked intrazone. So intrazone, does it match? No. So intrazone would take a hit only if the source and destination is trust or source and destination is untrust. Both of the zones are exactly same. In that case, your intrazone would take a hit. So this rule is not going to match. The second rule is interzone. So trust to untrust. These, this is an interzone traffic from one zone, originating from one zone, heading towards another zone. So this rule will take a hit. However, the action says deny, right? So this is implicit deny. You cannot change this behavior. Uh, you cannot change it from deny to allow. Okay. So what is going to happen? Based on the security policy lookup, we were able to determine that there is a policy interzone deny, right? And the action in this policy says deny. Right now, because this action is denied, the traffic will be blocked here in the Palo Alto firewall. So we will, what we'll do, the traffic coming from Bob heading towards google.com will be blocked on this firewall itself. So it's not going anywhere. This traffic is getting blocked by the interzone deny. Now, what can we do in order for this? Because definitely we will need access to internet because these machines, they, they have their job. Uh, they, they are doing some work on this machine, right? And that might need internet access. For example, your Linux machines need to reach out to repositories to download those repos on the machine, to reach out to a web server where a particular service might, might be hosted, uh, uh, maybe Tableau, maybe... SFDC or ServiceNow, right? Everything nowadays resides on the internet. So definitely they will have to reach out to the internet. So what do we need to do in order to allow this traffic flow? We need to create a specific security rule so that this particular traffic will be allowed. Okay. So now we are going to go ahead and define a very simple rule. Okay. Wherein under the security policy, We will create a rule specifying source zone as trust and destination zone untrust. Okay. And then action allow. Okay. So what this policy is going to do now, there are other parameters. If you remember, we discussed, uh, there are other parameters in the security policy, right? Uh, where is that? Yeah. So security policy, it will have zones. It will have source address, destination address, port numbers, applications, uh, a lot, many things, right? But we'll talk about that when we see the lab as of now, I'm just trying to explain the concept, what we will need to do in order to allow the flow. So the very simple policy that we can build over here is traffic originating from source zone headed towards destination zone of untrust. The action that we have to define would be allow. Okay. So now if we do that security policy lookup once again, this time the source zone is trust. Okay. So the source zone is trust. That's okay. The traffic uh, based on the route lookup, we came to understand that the destination is going to be untrust, right? So now the destination zone becomes untrust. And we have defined the policy stating that action is allowed for this particular traffic. So now it's not going to go ahead and hit the interzone. Interzone will not take a hit. It uh, This explicit policy that we have created is going to take a hit, right? Now, how, how this is going to happen, why interzone is not going to take a hit and the policy that we have defined will take a hit because 
the security policies follow a order okay what order do they follow security policies follow a top down order follow a top down order okay and if a match is found it stops there okay so for a particular traffic if you find a match it will stop there itself okay if if, if a security rule is taking a hit for a particular traffic then it is not going to go ahead and evaluate all the policies no it's not going to do that right so now based on this what what do we understand so the there are two uh, default rules okay uh intra zone inter zone default okay and then we created a specific uh, traffic uh, sorry specific security rule just above these rules right so let's name that as allow google or allow internet that would be a better uh, name so allow internet okay so allow internet is gonna allow traffic from trust to untrust okay so this is again interzone uh, interzone policy uh, interzone uh, rule okay now when the policy lookup would happen the first policy this is second this is third as of now this is the order because we have just defined one rule right so from top down it will come and take a hit at this policy the moment it sees that the internet is allowed from trust to untrust it's not going to go ahead and check other rules right other rules will not be evaluated for that particular flow. So a security policy evaluation happens from top down order until a match is found. Once the match is found, that security rule will take a hit and the traffic will be either allowed or denied based on the action that is defined in that security policy. Okay. So this is one thing. Now, a very basic question from the networking perspective. This, this was a question from the security's perspective, but if we say this traffic, even if I have created a security policy, will this work? Are we, uh, whether we'll be able to reach out to the google.com? So we need to understand this. We, uh, this will depend totally on what kind of uh, policy, uh, sorry, what kind of NAT is defined on this particular firewall. Okay. So coming to the networking concept. There is a security policy, right? That will allow this flow, but there has to be NAT that needs to be performed in order for this traffic to reach out to the internet. Why so? Let's try to evaluate. Okay. Let's say we let, let's talk a simple packet ping packet ping 2888 from this machine. So we try to ping 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8 .8. Right, the packet leaves here, comes to your one slash three interface that is your gateway 172.16.1.1 one slash 24. Once the packet comes over here, Paul Alto is gonna do a route lookup. Right, that route lookup is gonna take a hit at the default route. We have a default route that says 0 .0 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0. The interface it will take is ethernet one slash one and the next hop is going to be 10.1.1.1 right and that's how it's going to egress to your internet so the route is present now what will happen is your packet originated from 172.16.1.2 right the packet reached Palo Alto firewall because it had uh, the default gateway of the firewall once it uh once we are trying to send the packet out of the firewall we will be able to send it to 10.1.1.1 .1 .1 .1. 
Why? Because this is again a directly connected interface. The IP address over here is 10.1.1.2. The IP address over here is 10.1.1.1. So these are directly connected interface. We are aware where this 10.1.1.1 is. We will be able to send the packet to this particular router. So we are able to send the uh, you know packet to ISP router. The ISP router is going to reach out to 88888. The return traffic is going to come back and if we talk about the return traffic, okay, so return traffic is gonna come back uh, till this point, till this ISP router, okay. Now, the packet will be something like this. This is my source IP and this is my destination IP. What is my source IP? I am talking about the return traffic, okay? Because the uh, origin traffic is very straightforward. The traffic originated from 172.16.1.2, reached to Palo Alto firewall, used default route, exited the firewall, went to ISP router, from there, reached out to 8888. So the source IP earlier was 172.16.1.2, and destination was 888. The reply, when it reaches the ISP router at this point will be 888 from where uh, the source IP was Google, right? Because this is the reply packet and the destination IP is going to be 172.16.1.2. Okay. Now, this particular ISP router is aware about 10.1.1.2 or 10.1.1 dot zero slash 24 subnet but it is not aware about 172.16.1.2 right how or where to route that traffic it is not aware about that okay so because it is not aware about that what it will do it will drop the packet because it does not know where to route this packet this is a private ip address okay how we can resolve this there are two ways either we add a route on this Fire, uh, this ISP router, okay? But talking about the technicality, will you be able to go onto an ISP router and add a route over there? No, right? Because you do not control that ISP router. That ISP router is controlled by the ISP. So generally, we cannot do anything over here, okay? Even though theoretically it is possible if you add a static route saying 172.16.1.2 is to be sent to 10.1.1.2, then things are going to work. But we cannot do that because this router is not controlled by you. This router is controlled by the ISP, right? So what is the second option? The second option is the Palo Alto firewall natting the traffic. Okay. What kind of NAT are we talking about over here? A source NAT. Okay. So let's get to a bit of white space. Let's draw the packets. So again, I'm uh, again I'm gonna talk about the return traffic because the uh, traffic that was leaving from the firewall was straightforward. Okay, so uh, source IP, destination IP, so eight dot eight dot eight dot eight, and destination was one seventy two sixteen dot one dot two. Uh, right. This uh, one dot two was my destination IP. This this is the private IP address. Okay. Private IP address. Now, as we discussed on the Palo Alto firewall, what we can do, we can do NAT. And what kind of NAT are we talking about? Source NAT. Right, what this source NAT is gonna do is gonna translate the initial packet, right? That packet which originated from 172.16.1.2 to the IP address of 10.1.1.2, right? So what we are gonna do, let me draw that packet again. So my initial packet was 
172.16.1.2 and my destination was 8.8.8.8. .8 this is my source IP and this is my destination IP. Okay. So source IP and destination IP are, are defined. What we need to do now is do a SNAT or source NAT so that the IP address, that is the source IP address is translated. Okay. What are we going to do after SNAT? Uh, I mean, what IP address are we, are we going to use? We are going to use our uncross interface IP address. Okay. So this will become 10.1.1.2 and destination is going to be 8.8.8. .8 okay. We did a NAT or specifically we did a source NAT transforming this or translating this 172.16.1.2 into 10.1.1.2 and then we have sent the packet. So now the packet that will be leaving from your Ethernet 1 slash 1 will be this packet. Okay. And the traffic would be coming back to your ISP router at this point in time. And the, the reply that is going to come from Google, the reply packet will now change. The reply packet will be A dot A dot A dot A. This is my source IP and my destination IP is going to be 10.1.1.2, right? Because this was the original packet. The netting was done on the firewall. So the firewall is aware that I'm going to uh, translate it back to this IP address, okay? This packet, now when it comes to the ISP router, the ISP router is aware where this 10.1.1.2 is connected. So this, this packet came to this particular router. This router knows, okay, this is my directly connected interface. Let me forward this to the Palo Alto firewall. Once the packet comes back to the Palo Alto firewall, this is gonna do a NAT translation uh, again, right? Because we have configured a source NAT uh, in the first place and, and it will translate back the IP address the source IP address to, so this is going to change 8.8.8.8 .8 and this is going to change to 172.16.1.2 on PA firewall. Okay. SNAT. Okay. So that's because we have configured the source net, we are going to change back the IP address to the original IP address that was 172.16.1.2. Okay. I am not adding ports over here. I am pretty sure port overload and, and there are a lot many complexities. I'm trying to keep it simple so that you just understand based on the IP address from where the traffic uh, originated to where it was headed and how the return traffic is going to work. Okay. And why do we need the natting to be done in first place? All right. So uh, this is the NAT. Uh, uh, and, and once this packet is natted back to the original IP address, the Palo Alto firewall is going to send back the traffic. Uh, it will do a route lookup and it will send back the traffic back to Bob. Okay. This is how the traffic flow will actually work. So I guess uh, this is enough theory. Okay. Let's go ahead and have a look at uh, the lab, how we can initialize or how we can configure these settings, uh, you know, including security policy zones and this NAT so that our traffic that will be headed towards internet is going to work. Okay. So let me get the lab. Right. Uh, I'll answer the questions by the end, uh, towards the end of the class, guys. Okay. I, I can see there are a few queries and, and we'll answer these queries towards the end of the uh, session. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and log in to the firewall. Now, lab one is done. We are going to go ahead and select the lab two, click on open. Okay. Now, as I told you in the beginning itself that we don't have to go ahead and configure everything that we have done on day one, right? We, we can resume from where we uh, left in our last lab. So in order to do that, 
we have to in, import that configuration, right? So what you can do on your left side, you'll be able to see something called as import config, okay? Click on this import config. It will ask you to enter your credentials. Click on login. And on this, you'll be able to see the nodes which are there in the lab. We have Palo Alto Firewall, ISP Router, and these three Windows machine, okay? You'll be able to see import in a blue link under Palo Alto Firewall. Just click on import. Now it says error, wipe the node again and import again. Reason being, I have used uh, this lab, uh, you know, before, before this started, uh, maybe I have used it yesterday. So it still have some configuration. So let's go ahead and wipe it. Okay, this is wiped. Now let's go ahead and try to import it again. You can see, copy it, click on okay. You can close this and then you can come and start the Palo Alto firewall. You can start the ISP router and you can start the management machine. So uh, please do mind that we, we have just uh, imported the configuration for Palo Alto firewall, not the uh, Windows machine uh, because it was a simple IP address assignment. I did not create any import config for this Windows machine that we can do in a minute, right? So for Palo Alto, we imported the config for Windows machine. We are, we will still have to assign the IP address that is 192.168.1.2, okay? In order to log into this firewall, now the password is going to be test at the rate 123, okay? Not the admin admin because once you do an import, the password is already changed for you. So you don't have to do that admin admin and then change password. It will just have admin and then the password will be test at the rate 123, okay? Uh, let's see if the firewalls, okay. It will take some time guys. Okay. Please be patient. Let's see how much time does it take on this call and what kind of, uh, prompts that we are able to see. Okay. So, uh, I'll, I'll show you, uh, from the CLI because these, the, this was the query that I received, uh, uh from multiple, uh, uh, you know, uh, many of you guys, uh, on my WhatsApp that, uh, you're, we are not able to log into the Palo Alto firewall, right? So there was nothing wrong. It just, it, it takes longer. Okay. We need to be patient. This is as per design, even in the production environment, this will happen because of certain processes. Okay. So PAVM login, if, if I do admin and test at one, two, three, see, it says login incorrect. Even for me, it says login incorrect, right? Let's allow it some more time and then we'll see. Right. Meanwhile, this, uh, we are waiting on this firewall. Let's go ahead and assign the IP address to this Windows machine. So we are going to assign 192.168.1.2 to this Windows machine dot one dot two submit mask is slash 24 no default gateway needed for this machine click on close close okay now we can open the chrome let's see if we are able to log in admin test at one two three still saying incorrect let's wait for some more time In the meantime, let's start this Windows machine where Bob will be residing and let's assign IP addresses to this Windows machine as well. Okay.
let's assign the IP address of 172.16.1.2 and the subnet mask of uh, slash 24 255.0, okay? And we need to assign a default gateway. Uh, don't worry guys, I'll, I'll uh, change it. Uh, this is using Windows XP. I'll, I'll change it to uh, Windows 7 for you guys. I know Windows XP is outdated and it might be difficult to work on XP. Uh, I'll, I'll change it to Windows 7, but as of now, uh, I can go ahead and demonstrate on XP. That's That should be fine. So 172.16.1.1, that is going to be my uh, you know default gateway for this machine which will be there on the firewall. And then I'm using a DNS of 8888, okay? Click on okay and close. All right, let's see if we are able to log into the firewall now. Admin, test at one, two, three. Now we are able to log in, right? So it took a bit of time for me as well not just you, everyone. We, we need to be patient with this when we are trying to log into the first time. It will take some time, okay? Cool. Uh, so fine, uh, because uh, let me show you that it has the configurations from our last lab. Once we have imported this, right? If you do not import it, it will not show you the previous configuration, okay? Uh, even for you guys, this import uh, functionality is added. You will be able to do this in your lab, okay? Show system info. We can see the IP address is 192.168.1.1 that we have assigned. It The IP assignment is static that we have changed in the last class. You can verify show interface all. And then we can see the IP address for Ethernet 1 slash 1 is 10.1.1.2 slash 24. Uh, and the zone it belongs to is untrust. This is what we have created in our last lab, right? So, uh, we don't need CLI access as of now. Let's go ahead and access the firewall directly from the uh, management machine. HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.1.1. Okay. Click on advanced. Proceed. Admin. The password is test at one, two, three, T capital. We are able to log into the firewalls GUI now. Right, uh, I just refreshed it. Let's wait for it to load. Uh, we referring back to the diagram again. The interface that is connected to the LAN is Ethernet one slash three. Uh, the interface that is connected to the ISP is Ethernet 1 slash 1, okay? And we are not going to assign any zone and you can, even if you want to, you cannot assign any zone to the management interface, okay? Because this is out of band, okay? Uh, our firewall is accessible through the GUI. Let's go ahead and uh, configure the IP address first. So as per the diagram that we reviewed, right? We need to configure this as the gateway for Bob. So currently, let me go ahead and write this network assignment. Next, 172.16.1.0 slash 24. So the trust network is going to be this, okay? And the IP address that we are going to assign With this interface is going to be dot one. 
and this Windows machine is going to be dot two. Okay, so one seventy two sixteen one dot two has already been assigned to the Windows machine. We are going to assign the IP address one seventy two sixteen one dot one to the Ethernet one slash three. Let's go ahead to the uh, let's head towards the GUI. Uh, right now I am in the network tab. We can see Ethernet one slash one is already assigned the IP address of ten one one two. Let's go ahead and assign the IP address to one slash three. Okay. Now, before I go ahead and assign the IP address, let's have a look at these zones. Okay. Because we already discussed about zones uh, in this class. So, untrust zone is the zone that was created when we were configuring Ethernet one slash one. Okay. The zone that we have decided for the LAN is trust zone. So we can go ahead and create a zone over here. This will be trust. And the type of this zone is going to be layer three. Why are we selecting, uh, as of now, wherever you have these options, select layer three uh, by default. We'll talk about the types of interfaces and everything maybe in the next session. Uh, before I start the session, I'll give you a brief about the types of say, uh, uh, interfaces and that could be configured, right? So you'll, you'll get an idea of what this layer three, layer two is, okay? As of now, we need to understand layer three is used for, uh, you know, wherever you'd like to route, uh, when the firewall is supposed to route the packets, okay? So we are routing the packets as of now. So these zones are going to be layer three. We need to add the, uh, okay, as of now, uh, let's go ahead and create this zone, the trust zone and the type is layer three. Uh, you don't need to worry about any of the options. Click on okay. So the trust zone is created, okay? Now let's go ahead and configure the IP address on ethernet one slash three. I can, uh, interface type is again going to be the layer three reason being the zone is layer three the interface is layer three because we are going to route the packets right so uh, the firewall is going to be acting as a layer three device when it comes to the routing part or or packet handling part okay virtual router is going to be the default because that is the only one uh, individual uh, single virtual router that is created or configured on this particular firewall uh, the security zone is the trust we just configured this zone Let's go to the IPv4. We are going to assign the IP address of 172.16.1.1 slash 24. Okay. And that's it. And uh, in order for the, uh, okay, there's one more thing. Uh, we can, can discuss this later or let me, okay, fine. Let's click on okay. Okay. So Ethernet one slash three, uh, we have assigned the IP address as 172.16.1.1 slash 24. We can see this link is showing as green. This is still in gray because the configuration is not committed yet. Okay, we can go ahead and commit this configuration. Okay, right. This configuration is committed. Okay. Uh, let's come back to the policies. Uh, as I mentioned, there are two rules. I have not changed anything. You can see the intra zone taking a hit. Uh, there is no hit count on inter zone default as of now. Uh, we do not have, uh, we do not see anything under the traffic logs. Okay. We'll, we'll see what these logs are and all. As of now, uh, let me go ahead and do uh, noise. Let, let, let this be, okay? So uh, I don't want to, see there, there are certain things that we can do, but I, I just don't want to overwhelm the guys who are very new to this. So uh, 
let's go it in a very simpler fashion possible okay into zone default uh, is the trap uh, is the security rule that will allow your traffic from one zone to another zone intra zone is going to be the policy that is going to allow the traffic from same zone to same zone okay and intra zone by default is going to deny all the traffic and intra zone by default allows any traffic okay uh, let's go ahead and review the fields which are there in the security policy we will create a security policy in in, in uh, short while okay no it's fine uh, let's let's demonstrate the uh, the traffic first okay because there is no policy as of now let's see if we are able to uh, you know reach out to the internet or not okay so this is my windows machine This is my command prompt. Let me try to ping 8.8.8.8. We are not able to reach 8.8.8.8, right? It says request timed out. Okay. Let's go to the firewall. We can move the change. Okay, the change got committed. Let's see network. So we have assigned the IP address 172.16.1.1. Let's see any. So now you see there are hit counts. This is, you can see 18 hit count, right? So what is actually happening with this traffic now? This traffic, which is getting denied, right? This traffic, which originated from this machine, trying to reach out to 888, took a hit on this default rule, which says into zone default, right? This is the name of the policy. And the traffic, the action that was taken on this rule was to deny the traffic. Okay. Now you can see something over here. Uh, you see these are green icons, right? These green gear icons, uh, it says from predefined, right? Now, because these are uh, predefined rules, we cannot modify them first of all. Okay. And also, uh, the, there is, uh, because these are predefined, there is a setting we need to override in order to see if there are any logs generated. So uh, don't worry about these too much. This is just a, a thing, uh, you know, so that we'll be able to view the logs under the traffic log. Uh, we need to override these rules in order to see the traffic logs uh, because by default, the setting log setting is disabled, okay? So we need to do a log at session end, click on okay. Now you can see this one resembles overriding, okay? Select the same for the intra zone default action, log at session end, click on OK. So we have not changed the rule. The rule is exactly the same. The only change that we have done as of now is to modify the behavior of the logging. You just have only one option, OK, uh, over here that you can log at session end. OK, you, you have options over here, but we don't want to do this log at session start. We can uh, we just need to do a log at session end so that once the session ends, we'll be able to see, uh, you know, the uh, traffic logs. OK, let's go ahead and commit this.
just allow me a minute. I'm, I'm verifying a few things. No problem. Uh, as of now, uh, the traffic logs are not displayed. Uh, I'll, I'll check on that, but no worries. But uh, you can see this this particular traffic uh, is not allowed. Okay, we are still. It says request timed out. We were not able to reach out to the implement. So we need to do two things so that we are able to uh, you know get this traffic through. Okay, so I'll, I have left this into a continuous ping as of now. Let's go ahead and configure. Uh, the NAT rule, uh, or, or yeah, we'll, we'll configure the NAT rule first, okay? We'll name this as default NAT. When you uh, go ahead and create the NAT policy rule, right? So you, you need to na navigate to same policies, security, and then NAT, and then click on add. Once you go ahead and click on add, you will be shown these options, uh, general, original packet and translated packet. Under general, name is important. You need to provide a name. Uh, description is optional. You can provide a description. Generally, it's a best practice to provide the description so that you are aware why this security, uh, why this NAT rule was configured in the first place, right? And then these uh, parameters are not important as of now. Uh, NAT type, obviously we are gonna do a IPv4. We are not gonna do NAT64 or not uh, uh, NPTV6, right? Uh, let's keep it as IPv4. Uh, that's our use case. And we can head towards the uh, original packet. The audit comment over here, one thing that I'd like to add, this audit comment can be used uh, uh, in order to keep a track when, whenever there are changes being made in the corporate environment. So in corporate environment, there will be you know uh, monitoring of events wherein they will audit the system, which changes were done, which changes were implemented, and which changes were implemented at what particular date and time, right? So you can go ahead and provide this audit comment uh, as and when needed. As of now, this is really not in scope. This is just uh, uh, information that I'd like to, uh, I thought I'll share with you guys. Uh, let's head to the original packet. The original packet, the traffic is going to come from trust zone because Bob resides in the trust zone. The destination zone is going to be the untrust zone because we are trying to reach to the internet, right? So this is where we define the original packet. We have not done the NAT yet. The packet that is coming to us, the traffic will be received on the trust zone and the destination that we are trying to reach to is in, is in untrust zone, okay? The source address and destination address, I am keeping it any, any for now for the sake of simplicity. I'm not going to add anything. We can add over here, but we'll see uh, those things later. Not needed at this point in time. The destination interface as well, we can specify a destination interface. Right now it's Ethernet 1 slash 1. We have selected any that will do the job. Uh, we don't need to uh, specify the service. Again, when we say service over here on the firewall, that means the port number. So if you see in the dropdown, you'll see service HTTP, that means port 80. Service HTTPS, that means port 443. We're not going to define anything over here as of now. We'll keep this as any. So any uh, traffic that is coming from trust and headed towards untrust, we are going to go ahead and translate the packet, okay? And we are going to do, uh, there are two options that you can see. One is source address translation and destination address translation, right? We will discuss more on this. This is just to demonstrate the security policy. So I'm going to go ahead and not take too much time on configuring the NAT rule. We'll, we'll come back to this and we'll discuss uh, NAT rules in a bit more when we'll be talking about, you know, what is dynamic NAT and what are the port numbers and how it works and all that, right? So we are going to do the source address translation and we'll select DIPP or dynamic IP and port. And in the address type, we are going to select the interface address. And the interface that we are going to select is Ethernet 1 slash 1 because that's the interface to which we are going to do the NAT. So when you do the NAT on uh, Cisco routers, you define uh, NAT inside, NAT outside, and then you define an access list, right? And based on that, then you will configure IP 
NAT so uh, IP NAT source inside uh, IP NAT inside uh, source, and then you provide the access list number, and then you say port overload, right? So that's what essentially we are doing over here, wherein we say dynamic IP and port, right? Where we are doing uh, the uh, NAT with overload feature, okay? Uh, IP address for the interface one slash one is 10.1.1.2 slash 24. Click on OK. So this is my NAT rule. Come back to the security policy. We are going to add a rule over here. The security policy rule, uh, again, you will have to provide a name. We discussed this is going to be allow internet. The rule type is universal, which is default. That means, you know, uh, it could be applicable for either the same zone. Uh, it could be for intra, it could be inter zone. So there are uh, three options that you get intra zone. Intra zone specifically means this rule is specifically created for the traffic coming into the same zone and going back to the same zone. Inter zone means uh, the traffic which is coming from uh, inter zone, uh, I mean, from one zone to another zone. And universal means from any to any, okay? So let's keep it like that. Uh, we'll select this as universal default. You can provide a description over here uh, to, you know, get uh, to describe what the security policy is configured for. Uh, tags and group, and again, these are not gonna be discussed right now. Audit command, I have already informed. If you'd like to provide the information, what changes were made at this particular change, you can provide the comment over there. Source. We are going to select the source as trust because this is where the Bob uh, Bob's machine reside. And this is uh, from where the traffic is going to be originating. As of now, I'm not going to specify source address. I'm just going to select any source user, any source device, any. Click on destination. Destination zone is going to be untrust because that is where we are headed. Again, destination address, destination device. We are not going to provide anything over here. Everything is selected as any. Okay. Going to application, we are not specifying any applications as of now. I am just simply going to select any. Going to the service, this is selected. So service again, as, as I mentioned, right, this means the port. If you click on add, you'll be able to get, uh, you'll be able to select the service, for example, HTTP or HTTPS, if it's AT and 443, based on the kind of uh, port that you'd like to allow. But I'm not going to do anything like that. I'm just going to select the application default. Right. We can select any as well. Uh, we will talk about the differences between application default and any. These two play a very uh, important role uh, when it comes to uh, security and defining the security policies. Right. As of now, I'm going to keep it as application default. The reason is we are not using any custom applications in the environment as simple as that. We are not going to define anything under uh, URL category. We'll come to the actions. Action settings, uh, there are multiple options that we are going to talk about them later. As of now, please remember, there are two options that we are going to select, either allow or deny, right? So right now, I intend to allow this traffic. So we'll select on allow. This profile setting is for security profiles as to what kind of security we can enforce on this particular traffic. If you remember on day one, we discussed about content inspection. That content inspection is defined based on these profile settings. As of now, we are not going to do or we are not going to talk about the content inspection. I'm just, you know, demonstrating how you can configure security policy, right? That's it. And log setting, log at session end. Uh, there is no log forwarding configured, no schedules, nothing as of now, because this is a very straightforward, simple rule. Click on OK we have configured this rule, okay? It is a very simple rule that says any traffic coming from trust going to untrust uh, for any application over the default port should be allowed, okay? And we have configured a NAT rule over here that says any packet that is originating into trust heading towards untrust, do a source NAT translation uh, using the IP address of ethernet one slash one and do a port overload. Okay, so these are the two things that we have done. Let's go ahead and commit.
this is still timed out. We can see, right? This this traffic is still not getting allowed. Great. So the configuration is committed successfully. The configuration is done. So security rule in place, NAT rule in place. We have defined the Ethernet 1 slash 3 interface as 172.16.1.1 slash 24. We have created a trust zone for uh, Ethernet 1 slash 3, right? And if we go to the Windows machine, now we can see that the packets are successful, right? We are able to get the reply from 888. So this means that Bob's machine is now able to reach out to the internet and get a reply back, okay? Uh, we can allow or deny the traffic based on, uh, let's, let's review the security rule once again, okay? You'll be able to see the hit counts as well. You can see the hit counts, right? 71. That means uh, this rule is taking a hit and the traffic is getting allowed by this particular rule. Okay. Now let's review a quick review on the security uh, policy that what all things we can allow and block, right? Just a just, uh, 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 quick go through, right? So source is trust. You can select any, but not a good idea. In a corporate environment, we never define like traffic originating from any zone, going to any zone and should be allowed, right? That means a uh, violation of security. You cannot blindly allow any traffic. You need to be very specific which traffic has to be allowed from which source and which destination. So for the source zone, we have allowed the traffic from trust. You can specify the source address. So if I write Bob's address 172.16.1.2, then this rule will become very particular, right? That this rule will only take a hit for Bob's IP address. If I go ahead and assign this machine Steve's IP address, that is 1.3, uh, and then this traffic will not be allowed because if I specify 172.16.1.2, that means it will only allow that particular IP address. That will be the source IP address. That will be allowed. That's it, okay? Source user, this is again a user ID concept, not really uh, needed uh, at this uh, boot camp level, right? Destination, again, you can select as any or multicast, no need to worry about multicast as of now. Any means again to any destination zone. Uh, as I said, this is not a good idea. We can do that, definitely. We have the functionality, but from security's perspective, this is not recommended. So we selected untrust, that is where our ISP is. You can select a destination address. If I write 8888, that means only 8888 will be allowed. Destination, so source IP, if I allow 172.16.1.2 and destination as 8888, so only these addresses will be able to communicate with each other. Rest, we still need to define another rule that will allow other traffic, okay? So this is how we make a security policy granular. We'll see all this uh, going down the line, right? How we can uh, make it more granular and, and how we can enforce the security. Right now, the idea was just to demonstrate a security policy that will allow the flow, okay? Uh, don't worry about the device and all. Uh, application, if you want to restrict the traffic based on the application, you can click on add, and then you can go ahead and define you know, any application that you'd like, which is already defined in Palo Alto. Uh, for example, if you'd like to define YouTube, so I can go ahead and create you, uh, just select YouTube, right? And then uh, YouTube will be allowed or denied based on the action that I have selected. As of now, the action is allowed so that this application will be allowed. So, and if nothing, if, if any is checked, that means all the applications are allowed. As of now, we are allowing all the applications. We are not restricting anything. But in corporate environment, we, we might want to uh, allow access to only certain applications. So that's why we will come here and select a particular application and then uh, we can select the action as allow. Coming here, uh, the service and URL category, you don't need to worry about URL category as of now. The service again, as I mentioned, is a port where you can go ahead and define port numbers, right? There are two predefined uh, services. One is HTTP and HTTPS. Service HTTP means 
port 80. HTTPS means 443. You can click uh, click on new service and then you can define uh, the destination port and all those information. And then you will be able to select this service from the dropdown. As of now, we are not going to do that. Uh, we'll select this as application default. And action, we have two actions, allow and deny. Right now we are allowing this traffic and uh, log settings, log at session end. We are not forwarding these logs anywhere. And these are just the usages uh, based on when this rule was first created, when it was last edited and what is the hit count and all that information, okay? Uh, click on okay. We did not make any changes, no need to commit. Uh, you can see the hit counts are growing 331 because my uh, things are going on. Let me see if I can do a browsing something. So we can see Google is working, right? We are able to browse it. YouTube is working. It's just the browser is very old, okay? Uh, let's see if Facebook is working. So again, it says unsupported browser. Uh, I'll, I'll update the Windows uh, image uh, to Windows 7 so that you won't face these uh, errors, right? Uh, but yeah. So we, we saw that the internet is working. We are able to access all the websites and the traffic is passing through our firewall. We were able to validate that based on the uh, hit counts, right? That the hit counts are increasing. And uh, the NAT tool is also taking a hit. Let's validate that. So default NAT, the hit count is 442, right? So any traffic that is originating from trust is getting natted to the untrust interface IP address and then leaving towards the internet. When it comes back, the uh, the firewall is gonna do the source NAT again to the original and change it back to the original IP address and send the traffic to the uh, host machine, okay? So I guess uh, this is it for today's demonstration, guys. I think. Uh, we covered uh, security zones and uh, security policies and a bit of NAT, right? Uh, you don't need to worry about the NAT part. I will cover that in detail uh, and we'll discuss more about security policies. This is just like a basic rule right now that we have created. We will see few more granularities as we go down the line when you know we'll be allowing certain applications and denying certain applications. So there is much more to this, but as of now, I think we are good uh, with the basic understanding of what a security policy is, how you can configure security policy, how a NAT rule is configured and uh, what are zones, okay? Uh, let me go ahead and stop the recording.